The first Toy Story movie didn't just make Pixar Animation Studio a household name, it defined the childhood of countless people. The franchise has only gotten bigger as time has gone on and introduced a number of new and interesting characters. In this video, we're going to take a moment and appreciate the 10 best villains from the Toy Story franchise and go over what makes them so terrific. As bizarre as it sounds, the fact that the main characters in Toy Story movies are children's toys is kind of underplayed. Sure, every film has several lines of dialogue about the characters' nature as toys, but we rarely see them actually used like toys are in the real world. Only briefly do we see any of the toys used as a means for kids to express themselves and use their own imagination to create their own stories. That's what earns Attack Dog with built-in force field a place on this list of Toy Story's best villains. This evildoer is a persona imagined by Andy and applied to the toy Slinky Dog. The villain only exists in the story created by Andy that he's acting out with his various toys. This villain helps convey the fact that the characters in this movie are children's playthings that are mostly just a means for kids to learn and grow. Of course, this villain also deserves a place on this list for being the kind of delightfully extra that only a character created by a child can be. The fact that this villain falls to Sheriff Woody's attack dog with a built-in force field eating dinosaur only makes this character feel even more like the product of a kid's imagination. Dr. Porkchop is another great example of the anthropomorphized toys in Toy Story being used like real-life children's toys. Andy made his piggy bank ham into a maniacal villain simply by putting Mr. Potato Head's bowler hat on the toy pig's head. The evil Dr. Porkchop is apparently a space tyrant and the arch enemy of Buzz and Woody. Even more interestingly, when Andy hands over his toys in Toy Story 3, he refers to Ham as Dr. Porkchop. This implies that toys can have different names than what humans give them as a default and raises even more questions about the original Pixar world. As Toy Story 4 is set to address a good number of these questions and how exactly the toys come to life, this naming discrepancy will hopefully appear as well. Aside from the questions Dr. Porkchop raises about the world of Toy Story, he's a great villain in the franchise for the same reason as Attack Dog with built-in force field. He's a creation of Andy's imagination, brought to life in only the way that toys realize a kid's ideas. And since Dr. Porkchop does outrank Attack Dog in their own villainous hierarchy, it only makes sense that the villainous pig would appear higher on this list. Did you know that the Toy Story movies had a spin-off television series and that it was weirdly high concept? Because it did, and it was called Buzz Lightyear of Star Command. The cartoon is based on the TV program that made Buzz Lightyear a popular toy within the world of Toy Story. So it's a real version of a fictional show, and the characters in it aren't toys, but the fictional characters that inspired some of the toys in the movies. The actual cartoon is a mix of a lot of science fiction and fantasy ideas that border on cliché, but are pretty Pretty fun if they aren't taken seriously. One of the major villains of the show is Warp Dark Matter, a former member of the Space Police Star Command who went rogue. The relationship between Buzz and Warp is the epitome of cliché. Then again, it is a good cliché that appears in a number of pieces of media since the dawn of storytelling. Former friends becoming rivals due to ideological differences may be a familiar idea, but it's still an entertaining one. So even if Warp isn't the most original villain on the list, he's still a fun one and is certainly one one of the best in the Toy Story universe. Ronald Tompkins is the main antagonist of the 2013 Halloween special Toy Story of Terror. He's a night manager at the Sleepwell Motel who uses his pet iguana, Mr. Jones, to steal toys from children. He then sells these toys online for a profit. We learn in a deleted scene from the special that his goal with these villainous actions was to make enough money to buy a boat, which is a pretty inconsequential thing to ruin several childhoods over. His actions also make you wonder how many children are bringing super valuable toys toys into this motel. Or if he has such an eye for spotting valuable toys, why doesn't he instead hit up a bunch of rummage sales and sell the valuable toys he buys there on the cheap? 
Actually, now that we're breaking down his whole plan, he totally could have just trained his iguana to steal money from people and use those funds to buy a boat. This is the world of Toy Story, though, and that means that everyone has to have lives that revolve around playthings. Nevertheless, Ron is a terrible and incompetent villain that was more than likely arrested at the end of the special after he crashed a cop car. Although, it would have been interesting to learn what kind of sentence you get for stealing toys in this universe. Another villain from Buzz Lightyear of Star Command, Nose4A2, is a robotic vampire. With a name that draws inspiration from film's first vampire, Nosferatu, this character introduces more fantastical elements into the cartoon. Granted, these elements are always explained by advanced robot technology, but the character is clearly more fantasy than sci-fi. Nose4A2 has a lot of the powers and abilities that one would expect from a vampire. He can drain energy from robots, control the robots and computer systems that he bites, and can fly. Of course, this robotic vampire also has a vaguely European accent and a sense of elitism that has colored vampires in fiction for decades. This villain is also quite a bit more graphic than most of the other Toy Story baddies. He expresses a desire to torture a character in Star Command, and even goes into vivid detail on how he will perform this painful act. Nose4A2 is also the only villain in the Toy Story universe to perish. Although whether or not sentient robots are truly alive is a whole debate in and of itself, this robotic vampire does cease to exist over the course of Star Command. That's pretty intense for a series explicitly for children, and cements Nose4A2's position as one of the best villains in the franchise. The primary human antagonist in Toy Story 2 is Al, the Chicken Man McWiggin. Like a lot of the evil adults in the Toy Story universe, he's obsessed with rare toys and selling them for a profit. He owns Al's Toy Barn, which is the shop where Buzz Lightyear comes from in the first movie. In his commercials, he wears a giant chicken costume to better promote his business, which he hates profusely. In Toy Story 2, McWiggin steals Woody from a yard sale hosted by Andy's mom after the toy accidentally ends up there. After patching up the damage on Woody and hiding the fact that Andy was his owner, the Chicken Man attempts to sell a collection of Woody's Roundup toys. Just before the toys are sent to a buyer in Japan, though, Woody, Jesse, and Bullseye the Horse manage to escape, foiling McWiggin's plan. There's kind of an irony to one of the major villains in Toy Story being a guy who tries to exploit people's love of classic characters for profit. After all, that's kind of what Disney did when they relaunched the Toy Story franchise with the release of Toy Story 3. Meta implications aside, though, it's clear that the Chicken Man is one of the most detestable villains in Toy Story's history. Stinky Pete the Prospector is the first overtly villainous toy to appear in Toy Story, and one of the best antagonists in the series. He initially pretends to be a kindly mentor to Woody and Jesse, giving them advice and helping them process their feelings of abandonment. However, that changes about halfway through the film. Stinky Pete was actually resentful towards kids and the world at large. The prospector spent years watching kids take other toys home with them while he went unpicked. Eventually, McWiggin did purchase the resentful toy, but by then he was incredibly bitter. Toys are meant to be played with and loved by kids as a part of their design, and Pete was denied this fundamental part of his existence. That's why Pete is so desperate for him and the rest of the Roundup gang to become museum exhibits. Even if he can't be used as a toy, he at least wants to feel appreciated by Pete. People. This makes him a pretty sympathetic villain, all things considered, and it's difficult not to feel bad for him. It is implied, though, that his ultimate fate in the movie, becoming a toy to a young girl, does finally give him the sense of companionship he longed for. There are two versions of the evil Emperor Zerg in the Toy Story universe. There's the toy version of the character that appears in Toy Story 2 and 3, and then there's the cartoon version of the character that appears in the Buzz Lightyear of Star Command cartoon. Both versions of the character are pretty fun, and make Zerg deserving of his place on this list. The Zerg of the Toy Story movies is a pretty obvious spoof of Star Wars' Darth Vader. This version of the character is tyrannical, underhanded, and straight up says that Buzz Lightyear is his son. The parody here is a bit over the top, but still pretty entertaining and enjoyable for younger viewers. The Emperor Zerg in the cartoon is a lot sillier than his movie counterpart. Here, he's a flamboyant comic relief villain whose plans often go awry because of his own incompetence. Such as the time he tried to make evil clones of the heroes only for them to be children instead of adults. Considering Zerg is the only villain to appear in both the Toy Story movies and cartoon, he's a pretty big deal. The many fun scenes featuring the character also means he's easily one of the best villains in the series. 
Lotso Huggin' Bear is the primary antagonist in Toy Story 3 and is the only main villain in the franchise who is a toy. Initially, he welcomes Andy's former toys to Sunnydale Daycare warmly, but this is only a ruse to hide his evil intentions. The bear is actually trying to lure the toys into a false sense of security so he can trap them in the Caterpillar Room where they'll surely be destroyed by young children. On top of being one of the curliest and most manipulative villains in the series, he's also one of the most violent. He nearly obliterated Andy's toys in a trash incinerator and showed little remorse for organizing their demise. His only motivation for committing these atrocious acts is the fact that he feels betrayed by his former owner for seemingly abandoning him. That's right, his only justification for his actions is that a child was accidentally mean to him one time. So it's fair to say that Lotso is the most brutal and least sympathetic villain in the Toy Story series. His punishment for his evil deeds is that he gets strapped to the grill of a garbage truck. While that is pretty harsh comeuppance for a children's cartoon, his unjustified aggression deserves even greater repercussions. Sid is, by far, the greatest antagonist in the Toy Story franchise. Not because his actions are the most despicable or because he's more accomplished in his evil deeds, but because he feels more like a real person than anyone else on this list. It's heavily implied in the first Toy Story movie that Sid Phillips doesn't have the greatest home life. There are scattered beer bottles all throughout his home, and his parents are so neglectful that they're fine with their young son playing with fireworks unsupervised. It's clear that he takes out most of his frustrations by destroying or remodeling his toys, which as far as he's concerned are unfeeling in animate objects. It's also more than likely that Woody talking directly to Sid near the end of the film messed up the kid for life. Sid is undeniably the villain in the first Toy Story movie, but he shouldn't have to be. It's clear that this is a troubled child in a less than ideal family situation, but the movie isn't interested in exploring these elements of the character. What makes this even worse is that just about everybody growing up knew a kid who expressed their own frustrations with their life in a similar way. Toy Story presents kids in these situations as villains and lost causes, which is horrible, but also makes Sid the best and most heartbreaking villain in the franchise. What do you think of our ranking of the Toy Story villains? Please let us know in the comments section down below. While you're there, be sure to like this video, subscribe to The Binger, and click on the bell icon so you can catch all of our upcoming videos as soon as they are released.